Well, data is the new oil, they say, and it costs just about as much, others will say, too. The world of data provision is deeply complex. It's a very technical field. Department of Communications has not covered itself in glory over many years in terms of freeing up spectrum, the sort of band with which uh, cell phone operators can sell you airtime. Why is it so difficult to get the spectrum freed up? Shamil Joseph, Chief Executive of Vodacom. Well, I think it's, it's, it's a couple of four. Firstly, the spectrum that we need for 4G, uh, which is 700 and 800 bands of spectrum, is currently being used by the broadcasters. That spectrum needs to be freed up, and there's something called a digital migration that needs to happen, which essentially is converting uh, a TV signal from analog to digital. That then frees up the spectrum, which is supposed to be made available to the industry. Now, this was long planned. This was planned 12, 15 years before. Uh, in terms of the ITU, which is the international standards body. Um, in South Africa, that hasn't happened because there's been a lot of debate around which technology to use. Is it the Chinese, is it the European standard, and so on and so on. So we got caught up in, in, in this complexity. Um, well, secondly, or, or some people would say we got caught up in uh, corrupt practices. We got caught up in the, the battle for contracts. Maybe that was the problem. Well, I mean, look, you know, certainly there, there, there has been issues around, you know, um, and a lot of interest around, uh, around the set-top boxes and these type of things. Um, but, but, but I think what's happened is, is um, and then we've had a lot of change in ministers, which hasn't, to be honest, hasn't helped the situation. Was that deliberate, do you think, in terms of creating so much instability to create the environment in which people could capitalize on the opportunity prevent, uh, presented by the, the move to, to digital set-top boxes? No, because no one's been able to capitalize because it doesn't happen. So, uh, so I, don't, I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue's really been uh, centered around just being, being clear in terms of what needed to happen. So this was supposed to happen by, by June 2015 at the latest, and we still haven't migrated. Most of the countries around us have. Um, and, and the problem is that um, that, that spectrum that needs to be made available to industry. Because we're heading quite quickly towards 5G, the fifth generation Correct. cell phone networks, which then promise to be quicker, faster, um, and, and make the world a better place. Yet, if we can't crack the 4G, 4G. code, how are we going to crack the 5G code? Exactly. So the, the, the 5G, to some degree, is actually easier because the spectrum's available. Okay. The 4G is the, spectrum's, the spectrum had to be, uh, had to be clear, cleared up. So the digital migration hasn't happened yet. There is some of the spectrum available, but that also hasn't been allocated because then there was a change in policy, which essentially said, well, why don't we create a wholesale open access network? Now, and there was a whole debate around that. And then but who should evolved. own it? Should the state own it? Should you rent from the state? Should cell phone providers own it? Should it be done proportionately? I mean, it, it becomes a, a land grab of sorts, if okay. you like, for who owns the rights to the spectrum. Has that not been resolved? So then there was a whole debate around that in terms of who owns it. Then eventually they got to the point where they said, okay, you know, government's excluded. Then came the, the part where it said, okay, let's create a hybrid, which is after negotiations with the industry. Some spectrum will be set aside for a wholesale open access network for new players. Spectrum will be allocated to the industry. Um, but then the documents that came out didn't quite reflect that. So it, it's, you know, it, and, and it's taking it, it back it, to square one. Is it policy one. incompetence? What, what is the problem? How, let's drill right down into the very core of the problem. Is it ineptitude within the state? Is it a deliberate attempt to, uh, to frustrate the process? Well, I think, look, you, you've had a lot of uh, differences of opinion on it. Um, you've had the ministers taking the regulator to court, so, you know, and then all the changes has not helped either. So there, there has been a lot of issues around it. Um, and also, I think there's been issues in terms of, of, of uh, in fairness, industry and, and, and government finding, its, uh, finding each other uh, on, on this topic. Um, but nobody benefits from Nobody benefits from this extended fight. So no. why is the fight allowed to persist? So, you know, I think you, know, you also need to be able to pull it together quite, quite strongly. And, and obviously, uh, you know, um, uh, I think in, in the current political climate uh, and so on, uh, and under President Ramaphosa, one, one hopes that um, you know um, these issues can come come together quite uh, quite quickly and more and 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 and, and really uh, more succinctly in terms of what is the strategy uh, and what exactly are we trying to achieve.
Countries where telecommunication has been freed up, where there's been a liberalizing of policy, where people have been able to get easier access to telecommunications and the power of what smartphones can do and devices can do, have dramatically outperformed countries that are stuck in the dark ages. And we're not quite stuck in the dark ages, but boy, it feels close some days. No, look, I think, you know, from a technology perspective and so on, um, what we've tried to do is stay abreast. So, you know, we've launched 4G, um, we're 82% of the country is now covered with 4G, but we're doing it with spectrum that's not optimal for, for, for it. We need the lower band 700, 800 mm -hmm. spectrum, which penetrates better indoors, gives you more capacity, can be used on the existing site. In the absence of that, I, we're going to go build a new site. At, 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 at two million a site and but then you go maintenance more complicated and so on and as well so. because more and more communities are pushing back against this idea of having substations all over the place. That's correct and, and that also makes things difficult because the same people who complain about coverage don't want to approve the site so it makes it very difficult for us but they expect it to still happen. So you know it, it does become it does become inherently more difficult to be able to, 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 to even build more sites. So if you, the sites that you have, you can optimally use better if you had, you had access to more spectrum. So, so, so the way to think about it is we, what we're doing today is we're adding capacity, capacity to, to a site. Then when we run out, we either, we either use some of the rain network or we basically build a new site where there's a rain network mm. to be had. And that's how we're trying to cope with the volumes. And that's why we did the deal with rain because Frankly put, we needed access to some spectrum. You're, you're piggybacking on the back of them. They have got capacity for now yes. um, as they grow their business. Um, they've got that capacity. What happens when they become a big gorilla too? Well, I mean, look, we've, we've, I, I think it's, it's in their rights to, to compete. Um, I do think, though, that you, know, you, you land up with the same challenges, right? Mm. They too need will need spectrum. They too will face the same challenges. So it's easy when you have an empty network, uh, but when you, when you do aggressive deals, very quickly falls up. Because remember, mobile is a contended service, so it very quickly falls up. It's possible that 10, 20,000 customers can fill your entire network with, uh, with, 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 uh, with big bundles. So you've got to find that balance in terms of, in terms of and then you've got to add a lot of capex uh, just to keep, to, to, to keep, to keep pace. Uh, of, of the continuous growth in, in usage. Um, and, and what changes in the 5G world, so, so when you think about mobile today, what you're doing is you're putting up capacity and then you're sharing the capacity between multiple users. Okay, and, and, and depending on whether you're in 3G or 4G, with 3G what happens is you're adding capacity, the, 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 um, your service deteriorates, so your, your speed will deteriorate the more users are on, but at the same time, the cell becomes smaller. So the coverage actually shrinks. Yes, okay. So if I'm covering this entire campus and I put a load on it, the cell becomes smaller. So I've got to build many more sites mm. to pick it up. In 4G, the cell stays the same size, but the server still deteriorates because there's a limited amount of capacity of how much I can give a customer. In 5G, I start to have more capacity. So I can start to create offers that emulate what you can do in fiber. So does 5G become cheaper ultimately than, than 4 and 3 before it? 5G be ultimately becomes cheaper in terms of the cost to carry. That said, there's other complications because you have to build many more 5G sites because the higher the spectrum bed, the smaller the coverage area. So now I need a 5G site just to cover the building. The deeply complex world of data provision, but also this is not a sector that's without its political complexities. Of course, dealing with the regulators is one. But recently we saw Vodacom do an out-of-court settlement with a man called Paul O'Sullivan, who sued for a breach of his data, data privacy. Also, whatever happened to the please call me guy? That, in a moment.